What's going on, my PT peeps, my walking the family, my fighters? I'm One Eyebrow, also known as PT. Don't know if I'm winking or blinking, but I'm definitely thinking about Fear the Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 2, Review, Recap, Breakdown, Analysis, just everything related to the episode. So obviously, spoiler warning for Fear the Walking Dead as a whole, if you haven't seen the episode yet. But overall, it's a decent episode. I want to say that Season 7, as of the first two episodes, is a little slow, but we're getting there, guys. We're getting, hopefully, a rewarding season like Season 6 was. But before we get to it, guys, hit that subscribe button like share subscribe and even the smallest donation or any way to help support the channel truly helps us out we truly appreciate it guys now the episode focuses on morgan grace baby morgan rufus a new character and or i guess a couple new characters but we start in the uss pennsylvania the submarine morgan grace baby morgan and rufus are living here they're rocking the uss pennsylvania naval gear and the common theme is that baby morgan is hungry she's crying a lot and they have to calm her down. And it would be tough in a zombie apocalypse to have a baby here stuck in a submarine. They're running low on food. Grace is tired of things. She's just given up in the zombie apocalypse. She's once at the end, but she goes out to find food and she's unsuccessful. And it's pretty cool. I mean, it looks like a dystopian fallout situation here. It looks great, but she goes to a supermarket and she finds formula. There's one can that isn't eaten by rats and it's a mess but ultimately she does not find a can that she could keep because when she finds this can she drops it because these two people come in through the back entrance you know convenient that these people come in the same time she's there but she pulls the shelf down to hide herself this guy shoots a rat and hits the can and opens it and bye bye powdered milk so it's one of those things where grace is tired of the zombie apocalypse she's tired that she didn't have her baby and baby Morgan is not her baby. And it's kind of annoying to watch, I have to say. The crying and 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 the way more crying, we get it, we get it, we get it, we get the crying. And then it just was too much for me at times. And then Grace was gonna give up, like just give up. Just stop putting drama behind it. You know, the whole thing about the episode is titled Six Hours. And she came up with the math that you can be out in the fallout for six hours and then you have to come back in. But Grace knows how to soothe baby Morgan with music. Grace is there listening to music. She falls asleep. The timer goes away. Morgan comes back because he went out to go get food or at least look for food, but he didn't do that. He's been working on a car. So they have their fallout suits, their hazmat suits. They put baby Morgan in one of these contraptions here that they made but Morgan was working on a car Morgan knows how to make a car evidently he's a carpenter he's a mechanic he can do it all when in doubt give it to Morgan but Grace is like that's not gonna work we can't just go away and Morgan's like it's safe in here meanwhile you just opened up the back hatch all this contaminated air came into the car but there's a lot of little things here you're like hmm I don't know about that but Grace is totally against them leaving the submarine where are they gonna go what are they gonna do but Morgan made a map and he knows where to go, where he should take everybody. He's been doing his due diligence and Grace is totally against it. Grace is negative Nancy here. Rufus is sitting in the back. I just love this picture right here. Keep your eye on Rufus, we'll highlight him later. But Morgan plays some music and it's the tape that Grace had in the cassette player. He puts it in the cassette player in the car and they roll out. They got the timer going, so they have to be able to drive for six hours to get away from the fallout. And hopefully Morgan is driving further and further away. Baby Morgan is finally sleeping, so it's all good in the zombie apocalypse. No more baby crying for at least a little bit, but they drive away from the submarine only to come back at the end of the episode, but more on that later. So they're driving down the road and it's definitely something where Grace is against Morgan because she's tired of everything. She didn't have her baby. Things didn't work out. Things didn't go as planned, but she's the, you know, nuclear technician here and she knows what to do. So she's pretty essential for the story going forward. So she's going to make it probably until they get away from the fallout. But Morgan's driving down the road. They come across a town. The tape that is playing eventually gets to the part where Grace left the message for Athena. Grace starts to freak out. She's like, get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. Like, just turn the volume down, turn it off. But either way, it causes Morgan to crash, which is kind of cheesy. But Grace is freaking out. And I have to say, Grace is pretty annoying in this episode. I can understand why, but she's still annoying. Just like I can understand why the baby's crying. It's just really annoying. So baby Morgan wakes up. They finally get the tape to stop playing. And they have to go check on the damage of the wheel. 
Morgan saw an auto body shop in this town. Luckily it's there and they have tires that fit the car, but Grace is looking on and she's like, can you fix it? Can you do this? What are we gonna do? Are we gonna go back? Again, Morgan and Grace have different views, but Grace is really given up at this point. Morgan sees that Grace takes off her mask and he's like, put your mask back on. But evidently you can just live without a mask here. Animals do it all the time here because they're very much alive. But Morgan and Grace, they're arguing as they're doing this, the two people that were in the supermarket or the convenience store or whatever it was, it's the same two people that Grace saw come back around with the suitcase. They got bandages all over their face and they're pretty gross and disgusting. Remember this suitcase, it's kind of cool that we see later on. We don't see what's inside, but we kind of assume what's inside there for sure. But the lady opens up the door and Rufus runs out. Remember this for later on. Rufus doesn't have a hazmat suit, but he's breathing in the fallout and he should be okay, right? Just like the horses. But either way, this lady, I believe her name is B, is all about getting baby Morgan because she sees the baby as hers, even though it's not. They want the car, but more importantly, they want baby Morgan. This lady is crazy and creepy. She has a messed up nose. We're gonna show you later on. Mature content warning coming up for sure. But this lady thinks that this baby is not Morgan. It is Emma, her baby. It's not. But they go to the auto body shop to repair the tire. The guy's like, can you fix the tire? Fix the tire. Come on, fix the tire. Luckily, they have tires that fit and are going to work. Morgan, again, is a mechanic. He can do everything. He's fixing the tire while Grace and Morgan kind of argue. And I think it's Fred and B are the two bandaged people or the people in the bandages. And with all this going on, Grace decides that she wants to live and she wants to help Morgan. So she goes from ending it all to wanting to escape this and get you know, baby Morgan back. These melting walkers are gross and gory and pretty great, but ultimately Grace comes back around to help Morgan stop these crazy people. B is all about having baby Morgan as hers because we'll find out later on that they lost their baby, baby Emma, because Fred suffocated the baby. He thought it was a good idea to do that is what we assume. We don't see that, but that's what we assume happened. We find out that Fred and B know about Padre, a safe location. That's the second time they named Padre as a place. Is it Padre Island? Is it a place that we'll see later on? Is that where Alicia is? Still don't know. They're building up for that. Hopefully there's a big payoff, but they clearly mention Padre. And we saw the note in the first episode about Padre. So that's where they need to go. They have to decide what to do here to fix the car. And Fred tosses the suitcase in the back of the car. Remember this suitcase, that's for sure. We never see what's in there, but there is something moving in there later on. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But Morgan tries to fight back. Fred takes the gun. Fred jumps into the back of the car while B drives. And Grace actually pushes Morgan's you know, hand down so Morgan doesn't shoot B because the car backs out of the auto body shop and takes out the walkers and they kind of run over the walkers at some point and they all explode because they're basically melting from the fallout and the crater, I believe they call it. Hopefully we'll see that later on. But ultimately these walkers are destroyed by the car and it's pretty cool. But as B drives away, Morgan goes after them. Grace is against Morgan doing that for some reason. Again, Grace is just pretty annoying in this episode, but Morgan's like, what? What are, you, what are you doing? So then he goes after and fires a couple shots at the car. He blows out the back window, which again, the fallout in the air should be coming in. Baby Morgan is safe in the protective hazmat suit, the baby hazmat suit. But again, Morgan blows out the back window because he's a expert gunsman, marksman too. He can do it all, when it out, give it to Morgan on the show. But Morgan fires two shots, I believe, and then the car stops in the distance. Again, they blow out the window and it's pretty cool, but also over dramatic. But yeah, you know, that's what stuff is happening here in the Walking Dead universe at times, over dramatic for effect. But then Morgan runs down, rips B out of the car and Fred and they fight. And again, baby Morgan is safe with the hazmat suit or the baby hazmat suit. It's pretty cute. But then Morgan fights B. Fred grabs baby Morgan out of the back and runs into a building. So again, it's like drama, fighting, drama, fighting, car chase. So it's like a lot happens, but really nothing happens. They don't really get to go anywhere and you get to see this woman's nose. And that's definitely digital effects because you can tell when she has the wrap on her nose, she definitely has still her nose still. But either way, it's pretty cool. Then we see the walkers are coming around Morgan's car. So everybody runs into a building and they board it up. Morgan has to work with these people for some reason. He just didn't take them out to get more information out of them. Again, they board up 
doors and windows pretty sloppily. And then here's another great shot of the woman's nose. But again, when she has the bandages on, it's definitely, she still has a nose, but it's great digital effects. And I guess the cartilage melted away from the uh, walkers and the fallout. But Morgan's like, man, what happened to you, right? But either way, we find out more information about where is a safe place to go. And that's really their only part in this story because Fred is killed and I think B is killed. I can't remember what happens to her, but Fred is definitely taken out. So they talk about a safe place to go, where to go, and they have it located on the map. And they actually have a couple of different spots marked on the map, what's safe, what's not, where the explosions were and the bombs went off. So people have done their due diligence to mark things out of where they're gonna go, where they should go, where is safe, where is not. So we'll have to see what actually happens with this, but Morgan's gotta fix the car again. And as he's trying to fix the car for the second time, a car comes out of nowhere. It just drives down the street in the town for dramatic effect. And we do find out that this town had survivors, but the fallout was pretty close to it. So again, here's the car in the shadows in the distance. Is it a car? Is it a truck? Is it a police car? It's kind of hard to tell, but to me, it looks like a police vehicle. So I, I don't know, but either way they have lights. The person shines the lights, Fred and Grace run back into the building that they were in before. So these two hide. Fred takes baby Morgan, and you cannot trust this guy, that's for sure, but they go back into the building while Morgan and B stick by the car. So Morgan hides in the car, and he's got his gun. He ends up taking his mask off, where I'm like, oh, man, again with this mask. But this is the person that we see, and I'm glad it's answered because the speculation would be crazy. Morgan takes his mask off, aims his rifle at the person as B hides in the front seat. They're looking at, like, I don't know if B knows this person, but Morgan and B are in the car. Grace and Fred are in the building and Grace is looking out. Again, this is really doing a lot of protection with the fallout and the walkers, everything. It's plastic tarp. But like I said, Fred puts baby Morgan in this basket. Then we see this person coming towards Morgan and Morgan's like, stop or I'm going to shoot. Stop or my mom will shoot, right? Anyone know that movie? It's terrible. But ultimately Morgan fires a shot and it hits the person in the neck or in their armor. I think it's like dink first. You don't see where it's shot, but you hear it. This person's clearly wearing metal. Morgan fires another shot and hits the person in the neck and then the person goes down. So I think Morgan hits the person with two or three shots and the person falls in the street. So like, hmm, we got him, right? Grace is dealing with walkers inside with the plastic tarps. Baby Morgan is crying again, yet again, right? Morgan looks on and he was on top of the suitcase that Fred threw into the back of the car. Remember this suitcase, right? So there's something like moving and moaning and groaning and Morgan's like, what, you hear that? What is that? So there's something in there. It turns out that we think it's baby Emma that was Fred and B's child. Fred killed the baby and it's in there. Fred is freaking out with baby Morgan crying. Morgan realizes that they killed baby Emma and put the baby in the suitcase that the baby's still alive, B thinks, or something like they're afraid to put the baby down. We never see the Walker baby, but Fred is about to smother baby Morgan. We hear the you know telephone with the can. Morgan talks to Grace inside. And I believe that would work with the string and the cans. But again, Fred is coming towards baby Morgan. And it's like, is he gonna do it? Is he not gonna do it? Dun, dun, dun. Three, two, one. Grace saves baby Morgan. Fred is gone. And Grace picks up baby Morgan and starts to sing to her. And I think this is the moment, or at least one of the moments, that Grace is starting to come back around. There's a nice moment with Grace, baby Morgan, and Morgan. They get back into the car and Morgan is going to drive back to the submarine. Before he does, we see the car that rolled up, the body is gone, backs out. So the person is still alive that Morgan shot. Morgan, Grace, baby Morgan, not Rufus. Rufus is left MIA, we see him later on, but they drive back to the submarine. So they left the submarine only to come back to the submarine. But Grace is back in, she wants to stick around. Then we see this group of people inside the submarine. We knew this was going to be Howard from the spoiler photos early on, but ultimately Howard and his patrols come to the submarine. Strand is not seen, but Howard invites Grace and baby Morgan to come to the tower or whatever they call it, Strand's area. Morgan is not allowed, Morgan is not wanted, but Howard says, you two can come. This is my final offer. They decide that they're not gonna go even though it might be a better thing for Grace and baby Morgan to go, to decide not to, 
these guys steal all the supplies and raid the pantry. So they decide to go into the pantry cabinets food storage area. And as they're looking at all the stuff that they don't have now, baby Morgan starts crawling. So it's a nice little moment where baby Morgan is progressing. Morgan smiles, Grace picks up baby Morgan and it's a nice thing. Baby Morgan is progressing, super cute baby. And you know, the crying is what it is, but very cute. It's a nice little moment in the zombie apocalypse. Like they're a big family again. Grace finds something there. She picks up the padding that's above a storage area. So they're like, what's under here? So they decide to lift this up. Bing, bada, boom, honey pot. They got powdered milk, oatmeal, a bunch of supplies the last four years. That's where all the storage is. Oatmeal, powdered milk. They're good to go as long as they got good clean water to drink. They should be fine for a long, long time. Cut to Rufus, well, a car driving up to a campsite and Rufus here, a la season six, episode one, I believe, with Emil the bounty hunter. So it's definitely a callback to that. So the person gets out of the car, walks towards the campfire. There's a box there. We're gonna know what this box is, but it's very reminiscent of season six, episode one with the bounty hunter. Rufus, and it's definitely a major connection here because the person takes off their hat, the gas mask, and opens up the box. It's the Morgan Jones box that we saw from season six. You know, Morgan Jones is not in there. It's going to be Emil's head that's in there, still alive after all this time. But ultimately, there's the Emil head, and this is Emil's brother. And I'm guessing twin brother because it's probably the same actor because it looks to be the same person. But I apologize, I didn't do my due diligence, so I don't know if it's the same actor. And clearly says, sorry, brother. So we know that it's Emil's brother and that's how the episode ends. So overall season seven, episode two is Grace, Morgan, baby Morgan, Rufus, Fred and B, new characters, Emil's brother, Howard. And um, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. I would assume that Morgan takes out Emil's brother and takes out his armor. So are they just reusing story arcs from last season? similar ideas, similar approaches. Are the writers just gonna reuse stuff that they already did? I don't know, we'll have to see, but overall it's a decent episode. Season seven is a little slow, but it's getting better. But what do you think guys? Let me know your thoughts, post your comments below, stay safe, and as always, tell them Daryl. Yeah, we